This video is sponsored by the design mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. used with permission, all rights reserved. Said and just. Uh, it's definitely, oh, you're all in different places. I thought you were all going to come in the right place. Let, let, let's all move around. Well, I, I have to move you around because we don't have a pickles. <sighs> well, we do have a pickles, but we have a muscle pickles stationary it's awkward i guess he got the uh this week he got the the virus he, yeah he's he's gotta have like some insane muscles because he can just hold that pose the entire time he, he's super he, he's literally unbelievably super i tell you hello everyone welcome back to what i am hoping is going to be the final episode of the harpy queen we have never had anything this long um, at all. And that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I said those words and, and suddenly regretted saying that right away. Yeah. Um, we've never had uh, an adventure this long before. This is actually episode 11. We've had an eighter before, but never an eleveler, an elevener. So, yeah, it should be interesting. And, yeah, uh, there could be some deaths um, coming up. There could be some deaths at all. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, I'm not going to say anything else. I'll give a brief synopsis in a minute. But before then, I'm going to allow the players an opportunity to say who they are and who they will be playing. And we're going to move across to the person who is sat very still posing in his camera. It's just like ventriloquism. You can't see my mouth move. <laughs> uh, my internet's just terrible. And so this is what we get. I'm Mr. Pickles, and I'm playing the character that will die second in our party tonight, uh, Barlaby Fumas. He's the team's healer, the helper. He has spells that he uses to protect people sometimes, though our sorcerer is also pretty good at that. Um, he can cure diseases, cure poison, um, help lay souls to rest. He can make himself borderline invincible, except I guess the hammer that the Minotaur had last session would have injured me a little bit, despite my goddess's power. Um, I do have a shock spell, but that's about all I can do. Is uh, The worst thing I can do to people is stun them or defend myself from them, um, which means I rely on the rest of the party a lot to kick the actual butt while I try and help keep them alive. Barlaby also has knowledge of monsters, poisons, history, so he's sort of a support knowledge guy um, with a quarter staff that he tries to block with. And I will pass the mic over to the player who will, or their character will die last. Max later. Uh, not last, first. Come on. Well, I mean, you know you'll be running with true. all the jewels, so I assume you'll make it the furthest. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, call me out like that. I'm, I'm Max. I play Rohan. He's like a rogue that's not so sneaky. Crowbars open things instead of lock picks. You know, we're getting this. And uh, obviously, this isn't the best uh outing so far things haven't been going well and it's uh really showing but we're gonna win today we're, we're we're absolutely gonna win today and it's it's gonna be great everything's gonna be fine everybody's gonna die and i'm i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pass this to uh captain kangaroo hey everybody i'm captain Our kangaroo favorite. Um, sure. Yeah, if you guys want to make that the, the official title, um, okay, okay, Guru, I'm the one that will probably survive because he's gonna take off in a, as a bird, as a little finch, and then fly to a brothel right before the world ends. Um, he's a he, he's the sorcerer. He's the guy you go to to get things done, both magically and physically. He's uh he's there for uh, a light entertainment but mostly just to kick ass and show you know sh show whose names be taking 
Um, but I'll keep it short and easy. From I'm going to give the mic to our good friend Medivac to tell us, hey, Medivac, who are you playing tonight? Why, thank you. <laughs> uh, tonight, guys, I'm playing a gal. I'm playing Hashra Khan. He will be the first to die tonight. I mean, because he's a selfless pr- protector. Yes. He'll always jump into the fight first to save his friends and his colleagues. And with his little spear against the might of the most powerful harpy queen, he'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, I have no magic. I do enter into little trances and talk to my totem. Um, I also try to... I'm going to cut this short because I'm having a... a... Are you all right? Um, Are you all right? No, no, no. no. And I'm a scout, a forager, and a tracker. Right, one sec. Okay, I I will pick up as uh, Medivac deals with his contorting muscles. Yeah, so yes, so let me just say that to give you a quick synopsis of what's happened so far in the story. So the group have been together for a significant amount of time. They are well versed in how each other reacts and the roles of their characters. And they left their home base, which is in Lindo um, on the continent of Odis, and travelled to a place called Windvine. Um, Bartaby was there to set up a church with his two acolytes, Sam and Decker. Um, Cyrus is looking out for mag- people with magical potential. Hazra is seeking out, um, going around the land, trying to um, see what's about what flora and fauna to report to his brotherhood, which is his order. And Rohan came up to see whether or not he can actually start to create a thieves guild in Windvine. However, things did not go according to plan. To cut a long story short, there are some very nasty people trying to bring the harpy queen who's called Shahelia back from her imprisonment the elder gods one of which is um, Amriel who Baltaby worships banished um, Shahelia decades centuries ago but once they started to think that she was carefully trapped forever they re- slowly started to release their power on her prison and she managed to escape. However, the party is here to protect not only Windvine, but the whole of Odess. Because if Shehelia actually gets through to the material plane, then, well, yes, it's not going to be a very nice um, place to live in for a long period of time. However, they are not alone. They have found out some information from a soothsayer about how to kill Shahelia. They have a dagger with a shell-encrusted pummel that somebody is carrying. And she gave them a cryptic poem that um, Bartleby had to read every now and again, but has not looked at for a long, long time. But within that poem... There is, lies the secret or the way to actually kill or banish Shehelia. They have gone through a portal that has led them through some kind of maze on their way to try to find Shehelia Shehelia and defeat them. Last week, they defeated a, a raving minotaur very concisely and headed back to a room where the person had said, the old man has said that they could, he could open a portal to the land of that Shehelia lives in, or the plain. Um, they went off, killed the Minotaur, because they thought it had an item, but sadly it did not. And they head back, they headed back to the original room, And as they ran in, Rohan used his immense skill of 
acting, which I think was about 51%. I, I think it's probably the, <laughs> the, the highest skill ever um, that uh, Rohan has used. And as they came in, Rohan, Rohan acted and said that the Minotaur was coming um, down behind them, that they had to run out the way, and the old man ducked behind a stone throne, and that's where we left it. It's going to be a tough night for the party. And remember, you can support your favourite party member or myself. If you donate one pound or 100 bitties, you get a luck roll that you can give to any one of the players. Luck rolls in this game are incredibly important. They allow the players to... Um, change roles, change my roles as well, or ask me, sorry, they can ask me to re-roll. They can stave off death with luck rolls. So they are really important to them. They do have some of their own, um, but once they're gone, they're gone. They actually um, replenish every session. So if you have your luck points on your sheet, guys, then make sure you um, put them back up to full and you actually have one group look point from Medivac um, still up and running to, for anybody to actually use if they wished. Okay, um, are you ready to, ready to continue Medivac? Are you all right? All good. All good. Yeah, no, I'm it's my trapped nerves from being from a pain in my arm to be like oh on my arm. Yeah. Ooh, nasty. So my, muscles, my muscles contract and, and, and yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. And enough enough said. Okay then. So um I think Rohan, it'll be an appropriate moment to start with you because the party ran down. Um, into this thing. It just says my internet ca uh, connection is unstable. So if I disappear, um, somebody take over for me. And you came running down the corridor. Rohan, you did your acting role. And you, I think you said he's following us or he, the Minotaur's in hot pursuit and the guy ducked behind the stone throne looking very worried i think he let out a feeble scream uh, as well so yeah you all we'll say that you all come down and go into the room unless anybody wants to do anything different or are you are you all happy to go into the room yes i, yes. I will I, go into that room did, didn't the old man like drop stuff when he no ran he always loot. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Yeah, he dropped everything. No, he dropped nothing. He just um, ran behind um, a throne. He he wasn't carrying anything, and he's wearing quite um, battered robes and tattered robes, and that are quite dirty and unkempt. And yeah, he just sort of like screams. He lets out a little ah. Um, and dashes behind the throne and no the center throne that is um but you can't nobody can see him at the moment well has is going to move into the room and he's going to cover the door he knows nothing's coming but he's going to look at the part yeah nice um I, I guess cyrus will play along too and uh act like he's getting his glaive ready um but yeah, I think you'll wait to see what, what Rohan has up. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so you're all going to the room. Bartleby's in the room as well. And you can probably all hear a slight whimpering um, from behind the stone throne, the center one. You you can sort of like, there, there's a, a bit of whimpering, a bit of sobbing, a bit of, please don't let me kill me. Please don't let him kill me. Please, please like this and he seems quite pathetic but also genuine he doesn't seem to be putting it on or anything he really does appear to be um frightened and Ron goes up and goes april fool <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Roh rohan you're you're up So. 
Sorry. Just thought that was it was funny. Uh, Select. I'm gonna look to the the wall that he uh pointed out was the one yeah. that would have a portal. So that was this wall wall um here. And you can see that it's it's almost like looks like it's painted on in a an archway with the the inside of the arch all sort of like black and with bits of purple, a bit like a, a nether portal on um, Minecraft, if you've seen those. But nothing's moving. And there, if you're looking across at the figures that are painted on the wall as well, they seem to be, if you remember, they're all almost like pointing to the portal as if to say, this is the way. But currently it just appears painted and we applied witch sight to this prior haven't we to see if there's anything magical emanating from it yeah you did and there's nothing there there was nothing that stood out there correct you know, the back, like the there's yeah. common in this entire area still yeah but there was nothing specific to that yeah. um wall I'm Ooh. going to I'm going to say loudly to the in the room. I'm ju I'm just messing with you. There's no Minotaur anymore. Yeah, and it's sort of like um, roll roll your um influence for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the 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 sound um, still um, comes from behind the the throne. He seems um, he sort of like um, hears you say, "There's no um, nobody following. There's no monsters, mo uh, minotaur, or anything." And he sort of like says, "You just hear this voice say, run for your lives! He will eat you.'" Um, I'll I'll then approach the guy grab my glaive and then put it pretty close to his neck as possible okay yeah so you um go behind the um throne and for the first time being behind the thrones you do um notice something um cyrus apart from this sort of like very scared man there is a small like indentation in the back of the center throne and you sort of like come round, and you can see that in this cut out area uh, appears to be a small coffer of some description well probably more like a jewelry box um, that you would store say a necklace in or or something like that and you you notice that the man is cowering down behind it and he's obviously keeping an eye on this box as well but he doesn't seem to be touching it or grabbing it or anything like that you lied to us he so he saw like to is 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 it not coming the miniature was nothing but a man, a cursed man. And we killed him because you told us we had to. You killed him. You killed him. Yes. And honestly, oh. we're all in the same mindset to kill you next if you don't tell us what's going on. He, so, he sort of like uh, lets out what appears to be um, a deep sigh. And you, Cyrus, you notice, because he's still behind the throne, that his body relaxes um, somewhat. And he sort of like says, oh, for, for all these many years, at last, he is at peace. Listen, how do we get out of here? And he, he sort of like um, looks um, uh, up at you and sort of like um, gestures to the 
the bracelet or the, the jewelry box. And he sort of like points to that and says, that holds how you get out of here. Why did you have us kill the Minotaur when the box was right here the entire time? Because I couldn't kill him myself. Pathetic. I grab the box and head towards the rest of the, the group. Yeah, and so you see that Cyrus comes out from behind the um, back of the throne room, the throne carrying this what appears to be like a bracelet box. And the the old man shuffles out after Cyrus and sits on the, if you remember, there is a bit of a, a raised um, pedestal there before the thrones. And he shuffles his, yeah. Have we had this uh, this um, conversation between? Oh yes, yeah. C Cyrus is never the <laughs> yeah the softly. Yeah, he's the uh, me and you. Where, what's where? Uh, yeah. As you will, as the old man shuffles out, as you will um, turn to me and say, "Who was the manito to you?" And then he, Who was he? yeah, and he sort of like um, sits down on the edge of this um, the. Th the pedestal, the raised dais, and he sort of like says, he, he was my brother. Uh-oh. <laughs> Gosh. Was his name Cain? Or Abel? <laughs> um... Why do you want us to kill him? Because I could not. My condolences for your, for your best. He must have been the best for him. The best I could do is lock him, lock him away, and, and, and give him those those homely comforts that you could. Exactly. And he he turns around. And he he sort of like looks up at you, Hasra. As if he has this feeling that you you understand, you understand. Yes, one should not kill one's brother. He it was. True. But when, it is it is a it is a, a harsh mercy, but a kind mercy at the same time. I could not kill him anyway. He he was my brother, and yet I feel I lost my brother. Decades ago. What, what, what did that to him? Was it the, the Harpy Queen? And when you mentioned that the Harpy Queen, he sort of like um, suddenly is very wide-eyed and looks at you. And you almost like see Hasra, the colour drain from his um, face as he looks straight at you. And he, he, he sort of like then... His eyes dart around the room and he says, Do not speak her name this close. But that is not, but it's just a title. She will hear you. From this day forward, I shall call her. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she, she will hear you speak not her name. We'll call, yeah, her Tweety. We'll, we'll call her Tweety Bird. That's going to be her nickname. Roadkill. So. Roadkill? Oh, okay. Um, this is when I, I, I will then approach the old man, Cyrus, just getting angry with all of this crap he's had to deal with and all these magic points he had to waste for nothing. Uh, <laughs> he's going to grab um, the old man by the scruff of his, uh, his clothing and put him close, uh, bring him in close. Sip. Are you Tell us everything you need to know. Yeah. Are you, are you lifting are you lifting him up? Yeah. If I can. Yeah, cuz you're quite small, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, so just just roll roll your brawn um skill for me. Oh my. It'll be an that. easy roll because he is quite feeble, but you he's... say easy. I say uh this is embarrassing. 
Hold on, let me get closer. All right, there we go. We're on, oh, icky. <laughs> yeah, two, <laughs> two hours later, it, it reminds me of, what's that character in The Simpsons? The the old man who owns some, Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns. <laughs> I will get him up eventually. Yeah, you sort of... Uh, you get to a point where you actually get a chair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you sort, of, you sort of like um, grab him and try to bring him closer, but he he does try to resist, and he sort of like um, pushes himself um, away, and he sort of like basically points at the box that I think are you still um, carrying it, Silas? Yeah, I am. Yeah. And he sort of like points to that and says, that that is what you need to open the portal. You're not lying to us anymore? My only lie was that it was with my brother. Will, will you right. come with us? We're not done with you yet. And uh, I, I then look at, um, at Bartleby. Barley, show him the knife. <laughs> the the knife? The knife he got from the old hag. Rohan has the knife. Oh, Rohan? You have the knife? Yeah, I, show I him the knife. knife. Yeah, I got the knife. Ro- Rohan yeah, I pulls knife. out <laughs> Rohan pulls out a, a knife and two gems fall on the floor. <laughs> it's a, no idea where. <laughs> yeah, Rohan has the knife, yeah. Um yeah. Bartleby has the poem, the verse. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the poem. I thought, the, I thought for some reason I think the poem was etched on the knife. My bad. Um, Bartleby, show show the old man the poem. Show the poem. Show the poem. Show, show the, poem the poem to the old man. Okay, I, I I hear what you're saying, but the the issue is we were told a poem. Correct. We weren't given any. And I don't carry around. You paper didn't write it pencil. down. No, Why? you didn't write it down. All right. I mean, I've got okay. a very good memory. All right, then recite the poem to this old man before he dies from old age. And Bartleby, Bartleby thinks for a while and then starts to regale the audience with his oratory skill. Just roll your oratory skill at this point. You don't want me to try and remember it. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's not like I to take notes or. Uh-huh. Leaving it like that. <laughs> um, mm. hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to use a luck point because Ooh, I'm certain yeah. that there's some value to this. And over these past few days, it's probably popped in my mind once or once or twice. Yeah. OK, so you, you just make a stutter and cough, then start again. Yeah. And well, be, beforehand, you you start and you notice that even the everybody's sort of like looking around and not really paying much attention to you at all. So you you prepare yourself more. So you stand up straight, puff out your chest, and then you start again. And you echo your words echo around the room as as you speak the following verse. As the winds do howl and toil, the blood beneath will churn and boil. Then through faith, the curse will come and settle on the only one. Within her hand, the blade will slide through bone and sinew, flesh and hide. Towards its prize, it will plummet low and as darkness falls, the queen will go back to the place she once was secured, the place from which her followers lured. Her life will end yet once again, and the world will be free of her deadly reign. That was the poem. All right. Did you hear that, old man? Any of that mean anything to you? He, he, sort of, he sort of like look, looks around and just as you finish Bartleby, um, he goes, 
as if he was going to clap and then Cyrus thought, does that mean anything about it? And he sort of like, no, no, but it was a, a superb, a superb poem read so with so much passion and belief. You well, are I, so I am blessed. pretty literate. You are truly blessed in the the art of capturing an audience. I was enthralled. Well, thank you. I, I mean, I don't want to toot my own own horn too much, but uh, it's something I've worked on. Um, but this is a poem that we were told by a woman who believes that it has some meaning to our foe here, the, the Lord of Roadkill. <laughs> Sorry, no, I didn't know whether or not you were pointing at Cyrus or something at that point, but no. No, no. Um, <laughs> Harpy Queen or... <laughs> yeah, got ya. Um, he, he sort of like says, I, I am sure that there, there is many a verse out there for you to be, do you... Is the her in the verse? Does that... You broke up. Does the... Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 I thought it was just me. Uh, he says, is the her that it speaks of, that of... Shahelia? But you're not supposed to say the word. He said it. What the fuck? Stop him. Uh, we believe... So, based on the source that gave it to us, um, but, uh, I mean, that, that should mean something to you. Uh, can I roll insight to, to see if he's being a little trickster? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I fully believe if he... This old man, my eyes narrow it. <laughs> Good grief, today this is not. I'm doing really well. Nobody's doing well at this point. <laughs> well, now that they got all the uh, bad rules out of the way, I'm somewhat um, worried. <laughs> sorry, was... guys. I I gambled all my luck. <laughs> um, I remember you said there was going to be like a. Uh, where we would have to make a certain rolls against a, a a pool in order to uh, f figure this poem out. Um, yeah, um, that that is um, correct. And Bar to be made a lot of progress on my pool. Yeah. Um, uh, could I could I give it a shot? Okay. So just to let you know, um, each attempt takes thirty minutes with two attempts per hour. So it's not something you can... I think Bartleby actually did it as you were traveling okay. back. Yeah. Uh, so it's not something you can just do. It requires time. The other thing to... I think... I'm not too... I can't remember exactly where Bartleby went, but if you do fail... Um, you go wibble. Yeah. And it can cause you fatigue, and you have to use a willpower roll to resist it. So it's not something that you can just sort of like do now. It would yeah. be some time. And Bartleby never went back to it, I don't think. No. I got yeah. a little scared. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It started to become obsessive. I snapped at Cyrus, even though he probably deserved it. It still felt mean. T time is infinite in this room, all right? Uh, yeah, but we're going to get really exhausted mentally, and it's it's going to become an unpleasant thing. I mean, Cyrus knows. He is as literate as I am, I'm sure. And, and us literates, we the, the, the written word can be tiring. That's why Cyrus written. doesn't even uh, you know, read much anymore because it's so tiring. Yeah, he, um, just never in front of me, at least. He, yeah, and that's fine, you know, because he can always read on by himself. Yep. Unless he wants a translation or to see what somebody thinks of a certain like paragraph. And, and that's that's why I always have you read because I want to see what your opinion is first. <laughs> okay. You you're holding a box still, aren't you? With a with some sort of bracelet? Yeah. Okay. Um maybe this is more relevant than us talking about poetry. Like we can talk right. poetry when we get back to Lindo, I think. 
Sure. Okay, cool. Oh, old man, if we open this portal, do you want to come with us? He he sort of like looks at you all and says, she trapped us both in here to guard the way to her. That is the only way to pass through the portal. And he points to the the box that Cyrus is holding at the moment. Well, the best way to guard us is to come with us. Then we can throw you in the way when she tries to kill us. He, um, he, he goes um, quite sad and eventually says that I cannot pass through the portal. I, I see. I do not understand, but I see. Boo. And he, he's, he sort of like um, gestures to the bracelet once more, the box that Cyrus is saying, um, and says, I too am the key to open the portal. Oh. Oh. So there's two keys now. When you said there was one before. Lying again, old man. I just needed you to eliminate my brother. He was not alive anymore he was transformed he was barbaric the number of people he said he said he could control his anger but you have not seen the carnage that he left the the battles that he has fought full of rage and hatred for people he had never seen before. In the end, that was when I made that decision and locked him in. If it's any consolation to you, old man, you never laid a finger of us. We, we killed, killed him super fast. We did. We killed him super, super fast. Yeah. He was like, probably super, like, the most ridiculously easy thing we've ever killed, probably, but whatever. No, we, we, we killed the chicken once. Oh, no, 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 that was hard. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> I understand, I understand why you'd want this to happen for your brother, who seems to have been turned into a, a machine of destruction, but how do you know that you're, you're part of this? Wh why, why do you believe you're a key? Because she said so when she... Yeah banished us to this place, this place that we had to guard for eternity. Do, do Why did she choose you? you? So I got two questions. I got, yeah. um, how did, why did she choose you? And what was yeah. the other one? Um, do we have to kill you? And he sort of like says, we were once her her priests but we failed and she banished us and she he looks at you um hasra and says you don't need to kill me and he pauses for a while and then says i will kill myself and i'll just push my spear into the back we of the still love hearing that yeah. <laughs> Well, hold up. Before we do anything rash, you know, I, no offense since you were a priest of this, um, what do they call them? Uh, faux gods, faux goddesses, perhaps. You know, you know that sometimes things are just tests and sometimes our goddesses say things that they don't fully mean. And I mean, Amriel can help you. You, you don't need to die. But there, there might be a chance we can just use whatever is in that box to go through. And I can call upon my goddess to save you. You can 
You can protect me? Maybe. I I mean anything's possible. I have had Gamriel. I've had my faith restored. Bartleby, Bartleby. This man here was a priest of this thing. So clearly his beliefs with her are more. Um, the, the only reason he's trying work is because he's down here on his own in this maze. So if we free him or save him, What's to stop him going back to his mistress and warning her? She, he sa- she says, I, I will follow um, this, this holy man's deity. I will, if, if his deity can save me, then I will swear allegiance to them. I will worship. I was once... A- you will worship anything that will free you, is what you're saying. Hold on, guys. I don't think you'll survive after leaving this room. Do you not see how old he is? Well, yeah, he's... he's the- <laughs> Can I, well, honey, he, he is... He, he is there. <laughs> Have you seen how old he is? <laughs> You'll have to agree that his sacrifice seems pretty, pretty epic. In comparison to the sacrifices that Bartleby usually sees from his uh, from his church, he usually just sacrifice the reputation for silk robes and lots and lots of gold. So I understand, I understand. Um, but before we let you go, uh, old man, and to what you know, I'm assuming a knife to the chest or whatever you plan to do with yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your old deity, and maybe something you can give us some. Some little heads up that we can use against her if we were to say destroy her and send her back to her gross dimension. He he talks, he rambles on for a huge amount of time about her her powers, her immense powers, how she was able to um conjure up weather and winds and um storms and how her she seems to he talks about her her power of seduction her her ability to charm and to control men of uh, a variety of races and how eventually every king every continent turned round to obey and swear allegiance to her and how she rewarded her followers her her clerics her acolytes who were all female as well by bestowing on them immense powers the powers of um, harpies of flight of conjuring you know, strong winds and storms to fly across the sky. And, but he also says that with these came great, a great loss um, as well for in serving her, they handed over their um, immortality that they became regardless of age they would stay young but if she stopped the power at all then it would be that they would age instantly and die very quickly Mm -hmm. and he talks also about him and his brother who were the the high the high priests that actually found what appeared to be a scroll hidden in a in what appears to be like an a crypt or something like that when they were young and how they found it and read it and it provided incantations to actually um, summon 
her. The last thing he talks about is her being banished by the elder gods and how she cursed her followers and anybody who had granted her power. And or in this case, it seems like the brothers probably initially brought her into the world or made that connection. And he says how as the elder gods imprisoned her, she let out her wrath, not necessarily on the elder gods, but onto her followers and worshippers for betraying her, failing her, and really, you know, letting her down, seriously. And that was when they were transported to this place um, to guard and to maybe one day, you know, allow passage through once more. Okay. Well, it wasn't humans that banished her last time. It was the other gods. Yeah, it was the elder gods. It was, um, you know this. Um, yeah. Bartaby just... knows as well. Yeah. Just making sure there's nothing like we can do last time. It's like, hey, press this button. And she goes back. Um <laughs> That would be a really boring climax, I think. Yeah. Um, just making sure we don't we're not missing again. Uh okay. Well, first thing we need to do is before we go through this portal, which could be just right to her throne room, we need to uh rest up so that way we're ready. Um, and I have my magic points and everything like that. So I need to be able to it loosened up and everything um in that time i guess we just camp out and rest and try to figure stuff out okay is that is that the plan unless someone else has an idea it's sensible to take a break um just before we go through because we don't know what's through there and i although has doesn't know much about cyrus's power he does he's spent himself quite a lot by giving me what he did. Yeah. And the same with um, with Bartleby. Okay, so re remember, um, resting in this place gives you only half of your magic points back. So yep. your magic points will go up to half. Um, so if that means you only get one magic point back, then then that's how it would be. Um, but also remember, Bartleby, you cannot get your devotion pool back um, at all. You can't replenish that. So it just stays how it is. But you will have your magic points increased up to half. And you as well, Rohan, I, because I, I don't know. What, I think you cast a spell. Cast two. Two, yeah. Um, so you... Just out of interest, I've yeah. one hit point missing on my right leg. Can I does that heal? That, that'll be able to... Um, what's your healing rate? Should... Uh, ba, 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 ba. Like Wolverine, he's just instantaneous, really. Yeah, it just grows, grows back. Yeah, it does. Legs down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, where would it tell me that? God, I've not looked at healing rate before. Uh, I th it's uh, it's right under your initiative. attributes. Yeah. I hit him right three. Um, three. That sh you should have plenty of time then. Um, so you actually because that's like um, so first aid. If somebody's got a first aid skill, or Baltaby has a healing yeah. skill, doesn't he? I can I can help you out there if you need me to take yeah. something. Yeah, I've got first aid as well, so I can just like. Yeah. yeah, so roll, roll, pointless part of so roll, roll both of them, and then we'll see which one actually works. Oh, both of them. Both of them works. Mm. Um, excellent. So you will definitely, the minimum you can get back is two from them both um, working. Just to let you know that if you didn't have your healing, it would take you one day 
to heal back that one point. Okay, right. but it, but that that's good. It's all um, healed and whatever. Um, there's two questions. Uh, sorry, um, Rohan, what did you want to say? Uh, both of my legs are still destroyed from the spike bit. <laughs> How much destroyed? Two, two points from each. Okay then. Um, so um, first aid and um, healing skills can go first um, on that. So another successful healing. Um, does Hasra want to first aid as well? Yes, he does. Okay then, could you both roll 1d3? I'm allowing you to take minutes, Hasra. So it, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, so if you both roll 1d3. Big money. So that's to one leg. Ooh. And that's to the other leg, but you can't you can't go above what you normally had. <laughs> okay, so you can't. <laughs> wow, was much stronger now. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and just to let you know, for anybody who's thinking, the, the benefit of the healing skill is that healing skill can heal serious wounds. Well, first aid can't. Okay, it can... Um, return it to some kind of functionality so for example if you had a serious wound in your leg first aid would actually be able to splint it so you could walk on it but it would only be um the healing skill that could restore 1d3 points and then that's it so and then of course there i mean things like heal is it do you have heal wound or heal body I have the folk magic heal as well as the miracles heal wound and heal body. Yeah, so your folk magic restores all hit points in a minor wound and stabilizes serious wounds. And then body and wounds that restores all lost hit points in minor and serious wounds and stabilizes major wounds. Um, but you still wouldn't be able to. So, but there is a, a regenerate regenerate spell as well for sorcery that actually regenerates hit points per intensity that they do it on. Okay, there's um there's another um two questions that I, I need to know. Um who is keeping the box and what are you going to do with the old man? Um I think we'll we're gonna sell him to the slave trade i think that's what we're all we're all agreeing to right and uh no um let's see who wants to keep the box i mean i can hold on to it you hold on to it because you seem like you have the best willpower right now don't you can we um, um no. change the old man's name to alfred have him work with us <laughs> by all means <laughs> he well if what what he wants to do, if he's allowed, and it probably follows from Bartleby having the jewelry box or the bracelet box or necklace box, um, that he wants to sit with Bartleby and listen to almost like the preachers and the preaching and the um, teachings of Amriel and what she provides and what's the ethos of her religion like, um, et cetera, et cetera. And he's really keen to sit and listen to you, Bartleby. Um, just out of interest, nobody has looked inside the box yet. I'd just like to make that um, quite clear at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, Bartby, are you happy to do that with the the old man? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy to tell him all about how he can serve a you know a better goddess. Okay, um, could you roll your devotion tool for me? Your devotion skill. Uh oh. Yeah, and he um, seems totally. Um, convinced by the the teachings and really thanks you for um saving him for what might 
have occurred or might might occur. And he, every now and again, he sort of like um, glances at the box and and says, he, he says, it's, this is probably on your watch, Bartaby. Um, so everybody else is either resting or, you know, checking other things out. And he sort of like um, places his gnarled, dry and old hand on yours at one point and he sort of like um whispers to you he says he says amriel will protect me i know she will i know she will i am ready for my sacrifice she will protect me i believe that i have faith in her just like you do do you tell him your name, Bartby? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, my my name has no power. So yeah, I, and he's sort of like just just like you, Bartby. I can see myself following in the moonlight, being protected by Amriel through you, as you channel her great power. I am always in your debt. It was brought to me in the same way, Amriel's grace. And so it's my duty to share with those who are open to being saved and protected by the greatest goddess of all. And as everybody recovers from their rest um, or their sleep or whatever they were doing mm -hmm. and deciding that, you know, you finish off what's probably the last of your rations, that you've been eating throughout your time in the dungeon and you you come to the end and you've got um some water left or wine or whatever but you know things are going low very low and when you actually almost like decide it's time to go on the old man goes round the back of one of the other thrones and puts on what appears to be some kind of ceremonial robe it looks very old it looks very um, tattered but you can still make out the embroidery of feathers down um, both of the sleeves and around the base it seems to be made of some kind of a uh, a black almost like velvet material and the feathers are seem to be sewn on in or outlined in gold and silver thread and when he puts it on you you notice that it doesn't make his stature stronger or anything he almost like sags um under the weight of it it doesn't look heavy but he seems to be sagging under the weight of what it might, you know, it might relate to or what it could be, um, what it means to him and probably what it reminds him about his um, brother uh, as well. And he sort of like looks at you, Bartaby, and he sort of like looks and says, I am ready. And he gestures to the the box. I guess I will pass him the box. And uh, as you sort of like um, hold it out for him, he doesn't take it from you. He allows you to keep hold of it, but he opens the box. And for the first time, you can see what um, is inside and as he takes it out, there seems to be a necklace of some description. However, looking at it, it, it's definitely not any normal necklace. It appears that the, the chain part of it seems to be woven. What initially you think um, some kind of vine or fibrous material um 
everybody roll for me an insight roll if you wish to. You don't have to if you don't want to. I like the big insightful. Oh, look at Rohan bringing out the, <laughs> the, the criticals. Uh, <laughs> Cyrus is not looking at it at all. Bartleby is not looking at it at all. Uh, <laughs> was not looking at it at all. But um, Rohan, you does anybody want to use luck or anything? I'm not going to. No, no, no. Okay. Um, but Ro but Rohan, you uh, do look at it and you do figure out what it is. And you can voice it um, between everybody um, if you wish. Uh, do you wish to tell everybody what you see, Rohan, or not? Yeah. Okay, so Rohan looks a little bit shocked at it and sort of like looks at you all. And you all seem to be focusing more on the man rather than the necklace. And it appears that the, the chain part of it uh, initially looks like some kind of fibrous material, some maybe reed or cotton or something like that. But it's Rohan who that picks it up first, that it's not actually plant matter at all. Um, it is actually um, what appears to be human hair that has been removed from someone and threaded round to make what appears to be a necklace. And on the end of it, there's a small bird-like skull and beak. It seems to be about a medium-sized bird. Maybe, um, Cyrus, you see it, and because you can change into a bird, maybe a, a bird of prey, a raptor or some description, maybe an eagle or a hawk. And he um, takes it out of the box that you're holding, Bartby, and lowers it um, over his neck. And he, he turns to you, Bartby, and says, I am prepared. May Amril's power flow through you, Bartby, and save me from my fate we will do our best okay. and if you betray us i will slice your head off you were holding that box barnby <laughs> and he goes over to the the wall and as he gets closer and closer to the wall um you notice that it starts to shimmer um and um move slightly the the black part of it and the purple bit almost like as if it looks like water uh, as he gets closer and closer to it and he he turns round his uh, his back is to the portal and he sort of like uh, looks at you Bartleby and he sort of like catches his eyes is get are gazing straight at you and he holds on to the the necklace and takes a step backwards um into the in almost like into the wall and he's managed to sort of like step into it it looks like he is in fact the key to open the the portal and he he looks very serene, Bartleby. He looks serene and almost like angelical, as if, you know, Amriel's power um, is protecting him. And he smiles. And to, as he sort of like, he almost like leans back into it as if he's falling into um, water. And he maintains his gaze on you, Bartby, smiling as he realises that Amriel will um, protect him. And then at that point, his eyes fly open and his face and um, body are twisted and contorted and wrapped 
with um, great um, pain as he lets out a hideous blood curdling um, scream. And he he looks at you, Bartby, almost like pleading with you um, in the sense of needing that protection of your goddess. And then you notice that purple tendrils seem to wrap around his body and his neck and um, squeezes tight around his neck and his arms. And all of a sudden, he just sort of like um, holds, reaches out towards you, Bartaby, and says, he just shouts the word Bartaby at you. And at that point, the tendrils contract and pull and as he sucked back into the portal these tendrils pull him apart and he gets sucked back reaching out to you Bartby as his body's just torn to pieces and you just hear his screams um, blood curdling screams echoing as he disappears um, into the portal. That's fun. I had a different idea of how Amriel could protect him, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this one's all your fault. I yeah. thought that he was just going to activate the portal and then we go you know, kill some <laughs> I was going to come back and, and give him a little bit of the you know how Amriel sometimes says, nope. I was just going to mm. nope uh, his prior uh, contract with a different god goddess thing. <laughs> you, you know, sure? This, this, this would have been better if you just if you just let him kill himself. Like, yeah. I, so does, does your healing spell stick together? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it a stapler? <laughs> I... Um... Well, at least now we know he's not going to uh, yeah. you know, betray, us. Yeah. betray us or stab us in the back. That's mm. really this one's on you. <laughs> yeah, part of it. I think really like that, that's uh, terrible, Bobby. Yeah, that, that I, that I, I thought I thought Amriel would protect him. As I yeah. said, Amriel and I had a different plan there. I don't know. <laughs> mm. This park was still open, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um he, he just just he was aware of his fate by the way no. he did sort of seem a little aware but um he he would a have known fact about portals um that are divine based rather than sorcery based you don't feel anything is what i've heard so i mean he may have appeared to be in pain but i'm sure that it was more of a goddess trying to do a trick on us. Barbie's going to need to roll the seat for us. Yeah. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I'm really buying this bull. Okay. Yeah, by all means, roll the seat. Okay. I have a little experience in lying from my youth. Psych. But not enough. Yeah. Um, you would imagine it would be a lot higher because you tend to use that continuously over and over again. Barlaby just, you just see a bead of sweat on his brow as he keeps <laughs> talking. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, there, there's a lot of things that we could uh, make assumptions about, but I, I think in, in, instead of focusing on whether or not somebody suffered to rid the world of a greater evil thing, perhaps we should use his sacrifice to enact the final blow. Yeah. Hazra, Don't worry, Barbie, Hazra, I think you're convincing. Hazra, it doesn't seem to be what you were expecting, because you've become very... Um, I'm tuned to Amriel. Yeah. Yes. Very much and, so. And looking at this, this this mess on the wall that's opened up here, um, that, I yeah, there's... Be able to say, yeah. Was he not worthy? <laughs> As as I said, I had a, a different plan for his salvation than this. I didn't know he was going to throw well, himself into the. Maybe his spirit is now in the, the bosom of Amriel. Well, that's just guaranteed. Um, but I thought 
yeah, I, I had a different plan than this. And th this is where communication would have helped a lot uh, between me and this old man. But I just to be honest, uh, like the full transparency mm. during my watch last night, he put his hand on mine and it was a <laughs> uncomfortable moment. And so I meant to go over my plan with him. But the moment he touched me is just I Did my go... my brain was screaming that he's going to make my skin as dry as his somehow yes. and I, I kind of panicked a little bit yes, and so like... we, we didn't go over the plan and I, 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 I didn't ask for him to put his hand on mine so I feel did, like did you, did you say you remind me of one of my congregation <laughs> my altar boys <laughs> my altar boy. he did not say any it of didn't remind things, you of that thankfully no. it was no. very on... very tense Honestly, that fate was definitely in line with what I was thinking was going to happen. If you believe in your goddess, so I, I found Bartleby. If it's any consolation, I found it very strange. This man was a high priest for his goddess, who would switch to to Amriel without a second thought, just to save his own life. I mean, I joined the, my church on a whim. A whim in the sense that I was bleeding to death in an alleyway, um, and I was yeah, saved but, by them. But and reality is always passionate or compassionate as well. Passionate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so are we all ready to go through this and uh, probably is, all die. Is is this like one of those things that Kirby used to make? No. Yeah, but no. Yeah, it's. Gulliver's always used to be water. Yeah, we were water, yeah, but yeah. it's a portal though, isn't it? But it's... It doesn't look like Gulliver's um, at yeah. all, but it's definitely uh, some kind of... I mean, yeah, you can't see... Yeah. It, is it a portal? Yeah, you can't see anything on the opposite side um, at all. Oh, right. Could we win it with Gulliver's? No. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Um, Sorcerer first. Sounds sounds very good. It sounds fine. reasonable, I think. <laughs> That's cool. That's fine. I'm 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 pumped up. My muscles strong and big, and yeah, and you're you know, brave, sexy, and I'm, I'm and I'm super brave too. And you know, honestly, I'm a winner, and winners go first. And, and uh, as he's talking, I was pushing through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Let's all. Uh, pump our bodies and let's do it okay then i'll move what, you on to what happens what happens if he closes when he goes through <laughs> don't well, worry the, poem the world say, will be saved the poem said the second line is then through faith the curse will come and settle on the only one mm. so there's always a chance it could close after the first person okay how about this well let's let's all hold you know all hold hands and, guess which hold hands and just jump together yeah, but group. what the what if thing it is a bit like of a trigger right now? What it, what if it like you know cuts cuts off uh, like one of our hands? You know, oh, terrible idea. If it's not mine, then that is fine. No, I didn't mean that. Um, it, 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 let's let's all go. All of us yeah. go and together we'll hands at the same on. time. Yes. So you are you all going through? Yeah. Yes. Okay then. For one, a for so um, this is uh, the site that meets you um, oh, on no. on the opposite side. But um, let me re let me give you the the description of everything um, before you ask any any questions. So that there, there's a bit of um, description to talk to you about. So when you pass through there seems to be almost like a a pull that actually almost like grabs your chests and yanks you through the portal it doesn't seem like you are stepping through um as soon as you touch the portal it's as if something grabs you and yanks you um through and the the journey through the portal is not um pleasant um at all um so um the first thing i would like you to roll for me everybody to roll uh, a willpower check uh, am i willing 
Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I really was at my first. I'm, I'm definitely ruling. I, I can't. I can't. I'm getting bad rolls uh, right now, but I can't get worse than 99, right? Drum roll 100. Come on, baby. Come on. Hey. Yeah. Okay, then. Um, so who's actually um, succeed? Um, Bartleby, are you using um, luck or not? I'm debating on it. Um, uh, Hasri, you're fine. Um, Rohan, um, you would have to use luck and re-roll. Um, and Hasra... Um, take a seven. Okay, then. Um, so the only um, person that will fail, I think, will be... Yeah, Rohan. Is that right? Um, did... Yeah. Okay, then. So the you as you come through... Um, you all feel that it's quite um, disorientating as you come through. And as you pull through to the opposite um, side, um, Rohan, you still feel very um, dizzy, um, disorientated and everything. And you stagger somewhat as you uh, appear on the opposite side. And just to let you know now that all your rolls are one step harder um so if it would be uh, an easy roll it's now going to be a standard roll etc etc and you sort of like appear on the opposite side and there's several things that you need to be very much aware of the sky is not sky it seems to be this inky blackness and the purple and the shimmer of what the portal looked like before it seems to be that this area that you're stood on appears to be hanging in this nothingness. And what you see before you um, is a, a, like a stone circle. I hope you, you can see that. And I'm just going to point um, some various things out to you and then read something to you. So um, this here... Yeah, can you everyone see that? You might have to zoom out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. so you Very notice, much. yeah, so that is a cage that has the some of the children that were from Windvine in, okay? They, they don't look too good. Um, they're all crouched down, hugging each other, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so these people that are all the same... Um, they appear to be acolytes. Um, they seem to be very um, dressed in a similar way, Bartleby, that you've seen um, before. And Rohan, you saw them as well. Um, this girl here, if you can see that, Bartleby and Rohan, that's the girl that was taken from Windvine. Can you remember? Oh, no. Do you remember that um, one was taken away? Uh, and that's that one. And then up here, um, this is up in the, the inky blackness. Okay, and I'll read to you what you see um, now um, as you um, come around. So I've got a little bit of, of narrative um, for you. So... Sorry, one more thing that I need to um, say to you. I'm going to draw um, something on for you, okay, and to give you a, a, an idea. So this here, okay, I'm going to, um, I'll read it and then I'll refer to it. So, the winds ravage around the edge of the stone circle. So that blue line are, is wind. You can see that it's spiraling at huge speeds. Um, it looks like it's been summoned. It's picking up bits of debris and everything. And it goes from the floor um, right the way up to what I'm about to describe to you. 
Within its bounds, um, there appears to be a deadly hush. So none of the acolytes' robes are moving, um, none of the girl's hair or anything like that. It seems to be highly localised around the stone circle. Um, standing at the corners are four acolytes and they're all robed. Um, the eyes are closed and they appear to be chanting. You'll notice that there's one um, almost like by itself to the um, left and I'll talk uh, this one here. I'll uh, hang on. I'm on the wrong button. Um, this one here. I'll talk about that um, in a second. OK, so they seem to have their eyes closed and they're chanting and they seem to have um, from their chests. There appears to be a, a purple or blue tendril that reaches high up into the sky when they can see, where you can see um, what appears to be a shimmering portal. And this portal seems to have bars round it. So imagine that you're looking into a prison and there's these purple bars um, across it. You notice at this point that there's five and beyond the bars um, stands um, Shehelia. Well, she's not standing, she's floating and she's female, she's beautiful, her form is of a hu female human perfectly sculptured to whatever you enjoy um, w in women. And you notice that she has huge feathered wings, very beautifully crafted black feathered wings that actually shimmer um, even in the darkness and they're sprouting from um, her back and she's swaying and undulating in time with the cleric's um, chants. Beneath the um, portal you can see in the centre there appears to be a stone table or altar and kneeling on this um, dressed in white robes and praying with her eyes closed is the child that a teenage girl that they took from Windvine when Bartaby and Rohan was there. Um, off to one side there's a wooden cage and they um, have the other children in there. And as you watch and see this, you notice that the 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 acolyte to that is standing um, uh, alone appears to um, almost like falter, and you see her the acolyte being sucked. Um, up, pulled by the front of their chest as if they're yanked up um, from the chest. And the acolyte continues to chant and chant. And as she gets closer and closer, she opens her eyes and suddenly sees the um, bars before her. And she lets out uh, a scream at the last moment and she slams into the bar that the tendril is attaching her to. And as she cram slams into it, the bar disappears. And there remains four bars. <clears throat> as the bar disappears, you, um, Shehelia lets out um, a almost like a triumphant scream and reaches out and you notice that for one moment her, her human hand can pass through where this bar was and she sort of like reaches out and pulls the arm back and then just sort of like um, laughs in a hideous way. And the other four 
acolyte continue to chant with these tendrils leaving up, le leading up to the four bars of what appears to be a portal. And that is a perfect time to take our break. But there's one more piece of very important news to give. Bartleby. Uh-oh. You are alone. <laughs> the other members of your party are here, but there's one very important connection that you are missing. <gasps> Is it my awesome ability to wield my quarterstaff as an actual weapon? It appears that you no longer sense Amriel at all. Well, I guess it doesn't matter how many devotions. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll take a quick 15 minute break. So it's, uh, if we um, start back at 10 to the hour, that would be absolutely brilliant. And we'll see whether or not the party, um, just to let you know, you're not actually that small um, to scale. <laughs> Well, Cyrus was, but not as so I'll, I'll also like um, put you there. And by all means, have a, a chat uh, when you all come back. Yeah, we'll be back at 10 to the hour. So go off, grab yourself something to eat and a, a, a drink, a beverage, and then come back for the finale. We'll see you real soon. Uh, let me move you around as we wait for... Uh, Cyrus to return he might have got scared and just run off no he... I think he's at a party <laughs> <laughs> he's always um, at a party Captain Kangaroo turned into a cat yeah he's just running off now and then that's it yeah. right that's... every party is a captain party <laughs> <laughs> that's his and then uh, I'll put Mr. Pickles is up um, there. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. So when he comes back, we'll we'll have um, a roll. Um, I turned the music off before we went back, and chat thought there was an audio error because it just stopped. Um, but yeah, can you give me a shout when he's back? Um, because I'm not, um, I'm not looking at, uh, at the cameras, but I'll sort of like, um, uh, he's, he's back. He's landing. The um, captain has landed. Um, fantastic. He's got yeah, his headphones on. Has yeah. he got his headphones on? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Um, Cyrus, could you please roll for me your, I think you've got something like a strategy roll. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Could you roll that for me? Mm. Um, do you wish to use? <laughs> yeah, he's my, my second point of luck. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, then. So what's going to happen? Um, that would be close to a, a crit, but not a crit, won't it? Uh, I'm sure that will give you a critical on that. Um, it's like one um, twentieth. So what, what what we're going to do is um, this. So you're all going to have uh, a bit of time to either ask me um, questions, ask me questions, or um, I will give you uh, another piece of information. Um, so imagine that, Cyrus, you're quickly um, assessing the, the situation and you, you can all ask me um, one question if you would like to ask me one question. I'm going to give you a bit of information and the, the first bit of information I'm going to... No, right, let's do your questions first, if you've got any, and then I'll give you any other information so does anybody have um, a question that they would like to ask me about the situation? How do I get out of this chicken? No. <laughs> yeah, aliens. Um, 
No questions at all. Okay. I, mean, I, 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 get, the, like I get the gist of it. The, you're bluffing to me. My, so. my question <laughs> is, what is your favorite conspiracy theory? Um, definitely um, Area 52. No. Wait a minute. Um, so, um, a, li- a, a couple more bits of information. The, the winds that are howling round, um, you do notice as you're stood here and Cyrus is taking um, an overview of the situation, it's not just wind worth rushing round. You can see debris in that wind as well. So they're sort of like, there's not whole trees, but there's branches, there's small bushes going around there, there's leaves in there. Imagine that wherever the circle is touched, whatever it is, um, it's picked up a part of that. So there are things um, floating uh, around. The other thing to remind you about is that there is no... There is no blue or purple tendril coming from the um, cage, from the um, portal where Shahelia is, to the girl um, on the table, on the altar. Um, there's, there seems to be nothing there uh, at all. There's nothing connecting the two. And so your understanding of what she's there for or what role she's going to play is not 100% um, at the moment. Bartleby, you can wish, if you wish, you can try to make contact with Amriel again, if you wish. Um, Consider it a, a bit like a request for divine intervention you're not too sure whether or not it's this place that is causing the disconnection or what happened to with the guy um in the portal you're not too sure what but because you're out of contact but you can if you wish try to make contact that will take the form of a um a conflict pool um, when you'll roll your devotion, etc., and we'll reduce it down, and that will be every turn that will be um, your action. Um, yeah, so the last thing that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to put a, a, a timer on it, I'm going to um, give you a set amount of time that you can quickly discuss anything that you um, want to do. Um, before the the next stage happens, okay? If you don't want that time, then that's fine. We can just launch straight into um, initiative, okay? So um, would you like some time to quickly chat about way forward or just go into initiative? Preference. Chat, please. Right. Um, chat. Chat, okay then. So, so as soon as I say um, stop... We're rolling initiative. Yeah. Okay. So you can't do any actions. It's purely just talking. You ready? Three, two, one. You're going. All right. So um, I'm thinking we're going to go with uh, armor yourselves and then uh, armor, uh, get anti armor on your weapons. Um, I think the little girl on the table, Barbara should get. And then the rest of the three of us will go and attack uh, the, the acolytes as fast as possible. Uh, because I feel like they, they're the ones that are going to be the key to letting but, Shehali out. But how do we get through the wind? Um, uh, maybe I can roll as, ex, uh, as not as extinguish or not extinguish. Oh, it's another one. I can either try extinct. Uh, no, I don't have extinguish. Um, smother. I think maybe I can use the power against them and have them have smother go. Um, a, a smother is a spell that like prevents them from being able to breathe and whatnot, and eventually they lose their ability to function. Yeah, yeah but the wind is the wind isn't affecting them. They're, it's perfectly calm there, but it's super windy over. Our, yeah, I'm gonna try to see if I can maybe have the wind come out of their circle. I don't no, know. No, this is like a wall of wind we have to get through. Mm-hmm. Maybe we just rush it. We're just gonna have to brave through. We just gotta go through it. Or uh, we get uh, no, uh, Bartleby doesn't have um, help right now. 
Otherwise, I'm just going to have him neutralize magic. No, against the god that you. Oh yeah. <laughs> and mm. Maybe it, it, right. Scanning this area. Is there somewhere where the wind goes over? Um, like, it's say there's a rock and another rock, and it goes just over, leaving a gap underneath. Did that happen in Star Trek once? There was a force yeah. field. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, it doesn't. It goes right oh. the way to the ground. A god, a goddess wouldn't be. <laughs> so rubbish. Mm. You'll have 30 more seconds if you wish to say anything else to each other before we roll initiative. If we get through, are we taking that the we, we we're definitely taking out the acolytes? Okay. Um yes. I'm gonna yeah. Bartleby. Bartleby, go. Is, is, was, is, is he gone? Even here? I'm here. I'm trying to re-establish connection with my goddess. Oh. Okay, then. Let's roll some um, initiatives, then. Big money, big money. Oh, 16. Uh, Hazard beat me, obviously. Got yeah. Dang. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> okay, so just, just to... Um, let you hang on. Why have I got everybody twice? I only see Hazard twice. I see Rohan twice. Hang on, 16, 16, 14, 19. Okay, then these are the old ones 16, 16, 14, um, 9. So Cyrus will go um, first, then Hazard, then Bartaby, then Rohan, and my acolytes and the action um, of the scene always goes at the end of the turn, okay? And the it will operate on every turn. So if there's three turns, because people have three action points, then it will get three turns worth of action. Okay, then. Um, so, yeah, well, let's start and see whether or not you can live up to everything. Who, um, Rohan, you have the dagger. And Bartleby, you have knowledge of the, the poem. And, yeah, um, Cyrus, you're up first. All right. Um, I'm going to do a uh, the two spells together, spell resist and dand resist. I'm going okay. to... Um, all four of us um and whatever's left outside of distance and uh i'm going to put on a magnitude okay so you're going to cast two spells at the same time yeah mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so are you um the duration will be 14 minutes i can't imagine that changing um the range um are you changing the range can the range be within 14 feet? Um, well, the initial range is this touch, but you would have to put um, a shaping point into it to get 14 meters, uh, which is fine. If And what's, well, how many do you want to do it on? All four of us. Um, so that uh, be four. So um, this will cost you, for both spells to come out. So it is more efficient with both spells coming out. Number one, it's a hard roll. Uh, remember, because you're casting two spells. And it will take you four oh. turns to cast them. To cast it. So at the end of four turns, both spells will be in working. It's not as if you're casting one and then casting the other. Which will actually take you six turns to cast you're doing at four turns it's a hard roll and it'll go off um with everybody at the same time yeah so we yep. need to do within 40 meters which is four turns yeah and uh, otherwise or he can extend it to um i know he can't he doesn't have uh enough um shaping points um to extend it It'll have to, you'll have to keep in 14. So it'll probably um, take up to the barrier 
um, or you can elect just not to. Um, ch sorry, Chatters has said, Bartby, have you tried turning your divine connection off and on again? Just to I keep trying, it's not working. <laughs> I think about divine writers. Hello, hello. Um, so, yeah, um, so you start um, spell casting. So, this would be um, four um, turns um, for you to um, get um, through. Um, let me just put um, a four there so I can see it. Um, Hazrat, you're next up. Yeah, I'm going to move to the barrier, but keep within range. Yeah, okay. Just to try to study it. Okay, so the there are several things that you um, see and realise. Number one, there is definitely a one direction of this wind. It's going anti-clockwise um, all the time. It's not going up or down, but it does whirl round on every single um, level. Um, it doesn't. There is. It doesn't go right the way up to the top of the um, sky, um, but it goes up a considerable amount of space. You do also notice that things are flying around inside this like branches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, can, I, can I, with this turn, also just pick up a stone if I can see it on the floor? Say again, so I didn't catch I pick it. Up a, pick up a stone. Yeah, you can pick yeah. up a stone. That's uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bartleby, you're up. I would like to enter that conflict pool that you mentioned. I, okay. I believe that I can bring Amriel here. And and that that's a good thing to do. Okay then. So your the it'll be your devotion role, your skill role, and the conflict pool will be your power. Okay. Um, Just your normal power. Gotcha. Okay. Okay then. Um. So this is your um first um turn. So roll away. Power is a beautiful 14. Here it is. Um, so um, I win that um, with my crit. Um, so you can knock off for me um, six points from your um, power. All right. That brings me down to eight. Okay. Um, Rohan. Do as well as I thought. <laughs> Rohan, you're up. Sorry, you can't see my roll, but it is six when you look back. I did roll it. Um, Rohan, you're up. Uh, I'm going to pull out that special dagger. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, cast uh, speed art on it. Okay, then. Roll your folk magic pool. Uh -huh. Oh, I will use a luck point. Yeah. Um, so it now has um, speed dart um, on it. Um, so that's brilliant. Don't forget to knock off your magic point. And that comes to the end of the round. And from the gap, do you remember there was a bar, there was a gap uh, missing you notice that there's something coming from the portal now into the world. Um, there seems to be a, a very thin thread-like tendril that is going from Shahelia herself to the sacrifice on the altar. Um, it seems to be very feeble at the moment, but it's as if it snaked its way through the gap and has come down. And as it sort of like touches the girl, if you remember, the girl was praying with her eyes shut in what appears to be a white robe. Um, when it sort of like touches um, the girl, you, you see her suddenly tense and her eyes um, open. And um, you can see that the tendril seems to be connecting to her forehead. And we're up to the top of the um, round um, for turn um, two. Um, so, Cyrus, um, this is turn, and you've got three more um, to go. 
and um, Hazra, we're up to you. Yep. I'm going to throw the stone as hard as I can into this wall to see where it goes. See if it goes, if it goes straight through, or if the wind takes it straight away. Okay then. Yeah. Um, roll um, your unarmed, unless you've yeah unarmed would be cool. Okay. This is my worst one. But, oh. No. So oh. you you well, long. I'll do. Yeah. I'm going to use a point and look through verse up because I don't want to miss this wall of wind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hits hits Rohan who's doing behind you. Um yeah, so you um throw it into this wind and the stone's quite light in any case, but you do notice that as soon as it hits the jet stream, it does go uh, and gets um sucked um round. You do feel that you could probably force your way through it there's no um it just looks like really high wind but you are aware that there is things coming around it and you probably think it's about one or two movements if that makes sense yes um, to get through it you can't obviously go at high speed so it'd take you two turns of movement to get get through um, through it. Um, Bartleby, you're on um, 16. So yep, you... I'm ready to rumble again. Let's do the devotion fight. Uh, yeah, right. You you actually um, win. So just to let you know, my um, score is um, 70 um, in, in this. So I actually uh, failed. Um, so you need to give me you need to tell me uh, a 1d6. Roll a 1d6 and I will take it off. Oh, no, that hurt. Okay, then. <laughs> uh, let me just get my calculator out. You know, any any points of damage I can do here against Jay? Well, whatever like, whatever is, 3 minus uh, 40 minus 3, what's that? Uh, 40. Why am I taking half of a conflict, conflict pool? <laughs> 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 and um uh, yeah um rohan you're up uh i'm gonna rush it yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna push through i got this okay then um so you walk um or run in and you pass into um the wind um straight away and this would be your first turn in the wind so you would have enough one um so first of all will you please make me a brawn roll oh sh no uh, pain oh good yeah um so you sort of like brace yourself um as, as you go um into the wind and as you see him um almost like almost like got pulled pushed away from it but he seems to right himself and um carries on um through now there is a chance there is a chance that you might be hit by debris uh okay um so the way this happens is that you pick a number between one and six you then roll a 1d6 and if that number comes up, you get hit by something. Okay, so it's it, I. I've got nothing to do with it at all. It's all you. So, um, yeah, Rohan, what number would you like? I'm thinking five. We'll go with five. So roll a one d six. Are you oh, sure? God. We're good. Three, yeah. Um, a, a small amount of debris comes flying past you, but nothing um, significant to knock you um, over. Okay, then we're coming to the top of the turn uh, round again, and we're on turn three for anybody who has three um, action points. I think you do, Cyrus, don't you? I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've got um, that takes you down to two uh, more turns. And um, Hazra, you're on 16. Yep. You, have, you have three as well, don't you? Yeah. I do. So seeing that um, Rohan's gone through, um, I'm not going to leave him going through alone, so I will push 
on behind him. Nice one. Okay, so you actually um, go in now. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is roll your brawn. No! What? <laughs> oh, oh do it. of luck already. That's terrible. <laughs> Um, point of look to reverse it. Yeah, point of look. So you're um, in there and you're pushing your way through. What number would you like between one and six? Um, six, because I never get sixes. Okay, roll a 1d6. Oh, <laughs> I never get sixes. <laughs> Wiped, just wiped yeah, out instantly. It's, it's, it's a nine on my screen. <laughs> yeah. It's a five. It's a nine on my screen as well. Um, right. Okay, then. So let's see. I've got a table. Oh, my gosh. i got a table now. Um, so this is going to hit you in your 19. And yeah, head. <laughs> And you're going to take... It's all right, I don't use it much. Five points of damage Ooh. as a branch side strikes you uh, across your um, forehead. Um, you can use any armour that you have. It, that will um, protect you. Um, are you still up or down? I'm still up. A little bit dazed, but I'm still up. Uh, I'm bri zero. Um, brilliant. Um so again, you're at zero. No, I'm above zero. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to say, because you got six points. <laughs> I thought I'd written it down wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're you're fine. You probably got um blood coming down from your um forehead. Um, but obviously not as lucky as Rohan. And um Bartaby. I don't have any action points. Uh, no action points left. Um Rohan. Continuing the push. Okay, then. Um, so this will be into the second um, stage. So roll your brawn roll. Oh, boy. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to use last point lock. Okay. And re-roll it. Re-roll. Ooh! Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. So... I am going to rule, because it's a critical, you're going to um, bypass the, the hitting part um, and anything like that. Because you've got a, a critical, you almost like um, s go with the wind and a slight twist of your body. And as you see something coming towards you you manage to quite because you're quite agile aren't you you sort of like manage to twist at the right point and has you see this um giant rock that goes straight past um rohan but rohan manages to move himself just in time and he is um out um of the of the um, wind. The circle of pain. Yeah, so you're actually on the other side. Nice crit roll. Well worth a point of luck. Okay, and that's it. Um, mine goes um, next. Okay, so um, Rohan, you notice, you notice that this person um, here has... Um, the tendril seems to be almost like tugging her now and again. Okay, so it looks like at the beginning of the next round, she's going to get pulled. Um, so I'll give you that um, for nothing as we go up to the top for round two. And um, Cyrus, you're up first. So you're if you're spell casting, you'll go down to at the your next turn after this one, you will be able to cast your spell. Um, Hazra. Okay. You can do it, Hazra. Come on. I can't hear him. That's because I'm muted, sorry. <laughs> I hope you're absorbing all of our bad rolls, Azra. He's, he's, he's gone. He's gone. Do you know what? Do you know what? You, that, that look points I give every month. Yeah, you've got you one. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got one. You've got one left. Yeah. 
Oh, that that's a good one. A good recovery. That will put you um, into your second um, phase. So what number would you like between one and six? Uh, six, please. <laughs> oh, God, please don't. Oh! <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, luckily um, nothing um, rushes past you um, uh, 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 at all. And you now emerge um, out um, of the other side. Let, just let me take that I, off. I, I just stagger through, I'll clasp Rohan's shoulder and breathe heavily. Well, I said, it's no time for this now. <laughs> Focus, <laughs> Azra. Um, oh, yes. Let's, um, Bartleby, I think you're up. I am fighting for my goddess still. I'm going to bring a beacon of light and just fry this evil harpy queen. <sighs> oh, <it's... laughs> Yeah, I told you. Okay. Um, oh, thank you for that 100. Because I fumbled and you critted... Um, I'm going to allow you to do one po one dice roll max, so that'll be six points, and then you can roll um, another one to go with it. Because that's and that's because I fumbled, but you yeah. crit. If that made sense. that was a yeah. best case scenario. So, so I'll just roll D a D six plus six for you there. Yeah, that that'll be fine. Uh, Please don't get seven. seven. Oh, eight. It's an eight. <laughs> Um, Let's see, so eight plus what I already did, that should bring the total down to about 108 for them. <laughs> They're pool. Um, okay, um, onwards and upwards. Um, Rohan. Come on, Rohan, do some interesting, cool stuff. Get that not get those knives out. The, these are this is the cage with the um children in, by the way, and they're inside the the wind. Don't let them distract you. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm. Kill her. Kill her. Kill the acolyte. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna move up to the acolyte. All right. And I'm gonna make an attack. Okay. Um. So roll your uh, attack skill, your combat stuff. Are you using the special dagger? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Special dagger. Um, yeah. Okay. Then you, um, she can't um, defend uh, just seeing whether or not you fumbled or crit. So you, you hit her. So I need a special, I need um, hit location and then damage. Uh, hold on. I, I'm forgetting the specials. It's, I should have pulled that up. I, I, I knew there was combat. I just, Pull it up. Oh. So you you've got um an impale is always a good one. Get impales with, with the dagger. Don't do impale without dagger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah that's a good idea. Because you're going to um you can choose location. Mm. Uh the yeah, we're gonna go with choose location. Okay. Shank him in the tongue. And we're gonna go for the head. Okay then. Um, so, um, do some, um, damage, um, for me. Is it just 1d4 normal? Um, yeah. For the, okay. Oh, plus one, so two damage, that's right. <laughs> Out. You don't have blade sharp on it, do you? No. You put something on it, did you? Speed you dart. Right. Speed, speed art for the world. Um, is... okay then, um, let me just call up, um, the, um, their acolyte sheet. I think they definitely got more than one point. Um, well, it's uh, plus uh, one. I forgot about the plus oh, one. Oh, so it's for... two. Uh, two. Uh, okay, then. So let me just pop uh, this out. Uh, okay, then. So you um, whack. Uh, you probably go for the throat, I would have thought, rather, unless you want to try to plant it in the top of this person's head. <laughs> Well, yeah, for the throat, probably, yeah. Yeah, okay then. So you you slice um, r round the um, throat, and you you definitely do damage. Um, I now need to see whether or not I remain um, concentrating. So this is my um, endurance check to remain um, um, concentrating um, on the spell. Okay, um, so... 
I'm going to use a point of luck to re-roll that. <gasps> yeah, and she falters for a while, and then she sort of like grits her eyes shut. And you notice, so what actually happens is that you reach out, you slice across her neck, and she loses concentration for a while, and then focuses back on, closes her eyes tight, and you see her whoo, um, move towards um, Shahelia. Her feet are just coming off the ground. It's not... She's just slowly doing it. You will have another attack next round um, if if you want to do anything. Um, yeah, so we're going up to the top of the round again. And um, so this is, what's, um, is this combat turn two? Yeah. Um, so Cyrus, you need to make a hard um, invocation roll. Oh, come on, baby. Give me the good stuff. I, I, I want to make this fun and ev for everyone. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Here goes invocation. Come on. You. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to do a, a point of luck, but I can't. I can't just reverse it. No, because it has to be hard. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this sucks, guys. You I'm got sorry. this, champ. You got this, champ. You know what? You got this, king. To kick an ass, all right? Come on. We believe in you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, you lose the um, spell points um, for them, and the you're not too sure whether or not it's this place or the fact that you can't see the people through the um, through the wind, but your spell d doesn't seem to come off on them um, at all. And Hazra, we're up to you. Right, I'm going to move. Oh, you don't come up short like that. Damn. To where Rohan is, and I'm going to put my left foot back and thrust my spear. Thrust your spear. Do it to, to hit rolls just to see whether or not. Nope, that's absolutely fine. So you hit her. Um, so it'll be hit location. Um, sorry, special hit location damage. Um. Special is going to be oh gosh, impaler. No. <laughs> no, Hit location, good. choose location. Um, can I get choose location? I thought it was a proper special. Special, no, it's um, it's a normal special, it's not a crit, it's only a crit oh, when gosh. you do um, ranged weapons. Of course, yes, sorry. Uh, choose location, which will be head. Okay, then. Do some d d d damage for me. Damage. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. On. Um, so, um, let me do that. Yeah, uh, whereabouts are you sticking this spear? Um, I've seen what Rohan's trying to do by going around the throat, and I'm just going to step up behind and thrust my spear down the base of a skull at the nice that's how you pith frogs just out of interest so when you want to have the spinal cord of a frog intact in order to do experiments of it you pith it by sticking a hypodermic syringe at the base into its brain and then you go with the needle <laughs> like that <laughs> that destroys the brain and suck it out that's yeah, yeah. Oh my. awesome uh, yeah, fancy me knowing that, eh? Uh, to, well, you talked about humans first, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you you jab um, this um, spear in, and the 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 acolyte obviously lets out, starts to let out um, a, a scream, um, which is cut short as you almost like um, decapitate her um, from her body and as soon as she dies as soon as she dies because she will die the thread to that um bar disappears okay so now there's four three 
Acolyte, and four bars. Okay. And um, Bartleby, you're up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to war. And I believe that I'm going to war against these Acolytes. I don't think I'm actually fighting a goddess. Anyways, that's just my belief here. B to 10. An 87? 87. That's good. Um, 1d6. Oh, yes. Take a five. And that's how many pool points oh, no. I, I had left. <laughs> yeah. I didn't lose myself. <laughs> okay. So at this point, at this point, you feel um, the warmth of um, Amriel um, flowing back into you. It's almost as if you've called um, for divine um, intervention. And as she reconnects to you, you hear these words echoing in your mind and it's coming to you via discord if you've got it open oh i do got it uh uh yes um rohan you're up so this acolyte that me and hazard were getting on is yep yeah, is now dead on the um ground all right sweet uh so there's acolyte girl on the altar and cage to Hazra's right. Oh, that's four. You can uh, use your movement to get that. I'll allow that if you want to move your movement that. to get there. But you won't be able to attack because of how far it is. I'm going to go with throwing the dagger. Oh, nice. It's within range of speed art for the long range. Okay, then. Yeah. So, th so what what happens is that the force and the damage will be um, reduced. So chuck away. Is this the, is this the? <laughs> that was. So I was just about to say, is this the? <laughs> the, the or do you know? Can I just say that if you had missed, it would have gone straight into the whirling vortex. And that would have been so funny. People tried to grab it. As it goes into um, to, to, to Bartleby, just as he's got his... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you throw um, this dagger and you're not too sure how you manage to do it because it's weighted, it's not weighted correctly or anything. And it sails through um, to hit um, this um, person. Um, so you're... You can't have choose location now um, because that would be a critical. Um, so I need a special um, a hit location, then a damage. Uh, all right. Special, let's see. People can help him if you, if you wish. I don't mind. Impale might be perfect here. Okay, then. Yeah. Um, so do no 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 what what, what do you want it out because if you do impale and she gets struck into the air we lose the dagger that's true <laughs> shut up hazra shut up <laughs> no i don't mind at all how is this messing <laughs> what i would do is maybe try marksman and you can move marksman you know, yeah. yeah, you can move your location to one location around where you are. Yeah. So you would roll your normal location. So if you've got chest, you can then move it to either one of the arms or the head. If you've got abdomen, you can move it to the chest or either one of the legs, so forth and so on. All right. I'm going to go with marksman. Marksman. Nice special. Okay. Roll 1d20 to see the hit location. 
12. Um, 12. So that's actually in her chest. Um, so you can leave it there. You don't have to move it. Or you can move it to either one of her arms or her head. They're all connected together. Or you could go down to the abdomen. It's completely up to you. Uh, so, so I can go for the head? Um, yeah, you can use your special to put it up one to hit the head. That's not a problem. From we're, we're, the going, we're going for the head. Okay, then. So roll um, a 1d4 plus 1, isn't it? It's only for that's only for melee. Oh right! When you chuck it, what is it? It's one d four. Okay, yeah, one d four. Then go for it. Ouch! Okay, so this actually um, hits into um, the 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 side of her head. It doesn't. Um, bury itself in an eye socket or anything like that but it does do damage and it's just i'm going to say that it's not actually in her it, you know you've chucked it and it's glanced her um her face and um, she does need to make an endurance roll and remember you can use luck points to get me to re-roll remember that um so she rolls okay so she fails her um endurance roll and she um you notice that she falters and um turns to um look at you both and that is and now now it's my it's my um move now um so everybody sees this Okay, everybody sees this. So with all this happening, um, you suddenly, a motion in the portal suddenly catches your eye. And what you see, what you see is you see Shahelia push her hand through the gap. And it's not sort of like, ah, oh, she, you can see her her frowning and everything and pushing um, as hard as she um, possibly um, um, can uh, against the um, one of the bars. Uh, sorry, I rolled that um, as a GM roll. I didn't mean to. She got eight. Um, you can have a look um, if you wish in the replay and she pushes up one of these bars and the bar that this one was attached to breaks it just breaks it seems that Shahelia is trying to push her way through it's taking a huge amount of power and for the first time you can see beads of sweat and she's almost like grunting in order to push through and you notice that as this bar goes through um the thin um filament the tendril that's going to the girl gets slightly um bigger um this um acolyte here still has something um attached to her um but she has um it looks like she's broken a con concentration and now we go on to um round turn three for anybody who's got um sp action points left so <clears throat> cyrus you will i think You look like you're muted, though. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, really quick. Yeah. Uh, you said earlier that the it, it didn't seem to go all the way up. The uh, like there was a there seemed to be an end to the the correct the yeah. heights of the. Th I was wondering. I'm going to try to uh, do shape shift. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to Bert and try to see if I could fly over it. Nice. Okay, then. Do a dive down for an attack. Nice. Um, so, first of all, let's have your invocation spell. Are you um, changing any of your attributes? So, 15 minutes is fine. Touch is fine. It's only you. No, sir. Are you going to change your magnitude um, at all? I don't think I need to change my magnitude. I'm just trying to do this until I go over. I doubt... I, I presume to doubt that uh, 
uh, they're going to notice me. Okay, then. Um, so you're not changing anything. So it's just be one PowerPoint, one magic point that you do, and one turn, so you cast it now. So roll your invocation. Come on, baby. Do the locomotion. Yes. Oh, yeah. And and you now are, hang on, uh, I'll use the, because um, we had a nice owl on the opposite, on the previous uh, page. So I'll copy that across for you. Um, I like to imagine I'm a, I'm a hawk right now. No. Oh, a little bird. There you go. Mm -hmm. It looks so it's actually I'm going to just go all the way up and then dive down. Yeah, so I so hang on. So the spell casting takes that 19. Okay. Okay, cuz that comes off at the end of that turn, so that's cast. Um Hazra. I am going to if possible move to this one. Um yeah, so you can move there but not take an attack as you get there for because of the distance. And bar to be you don't I have to use a point of luck. Oh. I want to use my last point of luck um to cast a spell and ideally with this spell use my free action as well. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. <laughs> that was just a nice coincidence. Um so what I would like to do is I would like to cast my folk magic spell, Voice of Amriel. Oh, yes. I would like to... Uh, hang on, hang on. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's cast that first and see whether or not anything happens. Okay. Because you're yeah. out of luck. Yeah, because I thought that time was... Oh, yes. Yes, that does. So um, I will allow you to shout out five words with what's left five words okay yeah. beat this bitch hose i don't know don't eat the cheese again <laughs> duck has uh, there's uh coming oh no i left the oven on <laughs> go for it um Oh, shoot, I really wish I had another word, but um I'll give you six. Will you? Mm. Yeah. Um okay. Kill the child. She's the vessel. Okay. That that's was that the exact message that I sent to no, you? No, I had to shave off uh, like two of your words. You had to <laughs> shave off the me. hi bar to be, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say say those words again so everybody hear them. Kill the child. She's her Jeez, vessel. Uh, got it. Or the vessel. Okay, um, so you all um hear this. And um oh, yeah, so oh um so this um person here breaks a concentration. You're broken a con so what she has to do is re-establish it now. So, and to do that, she needs to do um, a willpower um, check. And let me just um, find it um, here. Here's a willpower check coming up. Um, yeah, so she reconnects it. And even though she's got um, a, a bit of blood coming out of her Rohan, she um, reconnects it. And at that point, um, she immediately gets tugged. Okay, and then we're up to round three, turn one. And Cyrus, we're up to you now. So you fly right through um, up to the top mm -hmm. and what's your plan coming down um, i'm gonna dive down towards the little girl right here um, okay and, yep. then, and if i can last second switch into my regular self and then slice down with my glaive okay so let me get this right you want to fly up there mm -hmm. fly down 
and then at the last moment cancel your spell and try to hit her with a glaive. It yep. sounds really cool doing it. I just don't know. Do, will I just, I don't know, die from gravity? Well, we'll just, I can um, talk you through. I mean, you're not going to do it that round um, in any case. So uh, Maybe I'll just land on the corner here and then switch. Uh, what, so this, this round, you're flying, uh, this turn, you're flying up to the top because that would be like your movement and that would be on okay. your 19. Um, Hazra, you're on 16. You're next to this um, um, acolyte, again. but you've heard um, Bartaby's voice. Yeah. Um, I don't have time to go over there, which I can do after I've dispatched this one. If I can get rid of this one here... You don't have to just any justify anything to me, has it? <laughs> like so again, planting a firm foot and thrusting in the same place that I did last time, hopefully. Um, here we go. Um, yeah, that that will uh, hit. So I need um, special hit location and damage. Yep, special choose location. Oh, this is like the old times, isn't it? Choose head. Yeah. Um, so this is going into uh, a new one, isn't it? Into her head. Oh, I got too cocky. Oh, ouch. Okay, then. Um, she needs to do her endurance roll. Um, so she fails it. So you've actually broken the um, concentration. So she sort of like is aware. So she will now... Uh, on her turn, she need to uh, try to reestablish it. Yeah. Um, so it is a little bit advantageous to you now because I can't attack or anything. I need to redo that connection. Um, Bartleby, you're up. I would like to call on my wonderful goddess to cast a spell. Um, oh. And the target is this lady up here the top left one am, am i able to get a clear view of her for, to do a, a bit like a line of sight type spell um yeah what whereabouts what spell this is what i was hoping to do is my shock give a little bit of a hey don't worship that goddess uh, okay so you you probably um probably need to move a little bit round there um to get the line of sight with her but that that'll be fine so roll your um um, exhort, isn't it? That's a devotion. Right, folk, folk magic. Folk magic, then. A little trick. A little trick of the eye. But bam 75. Yeah, so there's a, a, a huge crack of um, lightning or moonshine. Uh, I think I resist with... Is it evade? It is. Yeah. ba ba, -ba. Well, well. Da, 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 da. I never said my shock had good accuracy. Uh, no. Um, it's also very slow. <laughs> it, it was, I'm, I'm just trying to, um, I just want to make sure about something. That it's uh, not um, opposed? Yeah. Uh, da, 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 uh, da, 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 must win an opposed role. Yeah. Oh. So I don't win it. You do. <gasps> Can you see? Because mine, although I evaded with 26, your 75 is higher. Gotcha. I thought it was the, what, what do you call it, the differential stuff? No, it, just, it's both got... to successfully resist a spell. This is for folk magic. Uh, the target must win an opposed role of the relevant skill against the caster's magic user results. Okay, so if the target fails in the opposed role, then the spell takes effect as normal. Um, in that case, uh, here's your hit location. Ouch. Six. That's a, is that a leg? And here are the number of turns. Three, three turns to the leg. Uh, right, let's do this one for that. Bringing out the damage points, but not really. Yeah, okay then. Um, I need to make an endurance check, I think, to stay on that leg. Because um, I've got a, a dead leg now. 
Okay, so she actually, um, <clears throat> this is the one that Rohan has hit um, as well. And she sort of like crumbles um, to the floor uh, on 16. And Rohan, you're up on 14. I am going to move over to where she is to go try to get the dagger back. Okay, um, so you are going to have to move past her to um, um, go uh, and get it. And as you move past, she does try to reach out and, and grab your leg um, in order to um, stop you. Um, but um, she doesn't manage. She feebly tries to um, grab your foot and trip you over. But you nimbly um, get um, out of the way. And I will allow you to pick pick up um, the dagger um, when you get there. Okay, we're coming back to top of the turn. Oh, no, it's me. Oh, I, knew, I forgot then. Uh, I'll put that to combat turn one. And Oh, um... Bartaby, do you need to? Oh yeah, that's right. I think I've got my uh, my sweat check. Yeah. Uh, am I sweaty? No. Ooh, no. I'm never sweaty. I'm always flexible. Uh, so um, this is still combat round three. So I need to just make you all aware. So the person in front of you, Hasra, needs to try to re re reestablish her connection. Um, which she does, which she um, does. And at that point, at that point, Hazra, you see her starting to um, be dragged up. At the same time, at the same time, this person here, Rohan, you notice out the corner of your eye, um, Cyrus, you see this. She starts to get pulled up as well. OK, and it seems that almost um, Shahelia is trying to pull the power to break these bars as quickly um, as she can. This um, one that you bypass, um, which is uh, who's stunned on the floor, she needs to make a willpower check to reconnect. But her skill level is formidable. OK, because she's on the floor and she's damaged. So she needs to make a formidable, um, which she doesn't. But I can use my point of luck to reverse it to 29. No, I'm joking. <laughs> You're not wrong. You could have if you had luck. I, I could if I, if I had a luck point. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so she tries to um, make a connection, um, but um, fails on her. Oh, and finally, um, Shahelia tries to push through what it, what it is um, left. And you notice that the bars um, flex somewhat, but she doesn't seem to be able to... Um, push but you do see that the bars are getting weaker and weaker okay so this is um turn two um cyrus you're up in the air what would you like to do i'm gonna land right here and switch into my own body and if i can i probably won't be able to switch and attack at the same turn correct but um at least land here but yeah hang on i'm getting you don't worry mm -hmm. Let's just make you appear again. There you go. Um, so, yeah, so you, you appear there. Um, Hasra, this girl, in, this acolyte in front of you being pulled um, again. She is rising up, so more... More stabbing. Um, yeah, more jabby-jabby. <laughs> go for it. Oh, no! <laughs> So, <laughs> would you like to reverse it? <laughs> no, you've got no luck left. Um, so that's no. It it's not a fumble. No, it because um, because it's a hundred over a hundred. Your skill, you only fumble on a hundred. 
Um, it would be a fumble for the higher skills, though, because your skill level for hard goes down. Can you see? So really, for a hard, your skill level is only 74, but so a 99 or 100 would fumble. So you, you don't... You don't have to do anything, but you do um, miss. Um, and, yeah, I, I've never known that happen for ages. Um, Hasra, you're not having a very good time. No, no I don't think I am. I, but, think, I think I need a new character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bartaby, you're up on 16. I used my free action from round two, correct? I didn't use my... Uh, no, you've used your free action from round, what, yeah, what yeah, round two, two. yeah, lucky. yeah. So this is now round three, yeah. Um, so what I'd like to do is use my free action to reiterate, um, you have to kill the girl. Okay. As loudly as I can. So, uh, yeah, so let's, let's roll for that, um. Um, I tell you, I tell you what, um, let's, I know I'm going to, I'm just going to let it, I don't think it will affect. I was going to see whether or not they can hear it over the high winds, but we'll, we'll leave it. So yeah, you can use your free action for that. That's 16. Okay. Then, um, Rohan. Would I be able to cast a spell as well? Um, yes, you can. Because what I'd like to do is actually use a miracle. Oh, um, dogs. <sighs> who let the dogs out? Me. Oh. Ooh, ooh. I, no, I thought the dog was going to bark on time, which would be e excellent. Yeah, um, what would you like to cast? If I can, if I'm close enough to do this, actually, I think this is a ranged one. I'd like to try and dismiss magic on this wall of wind because it offends my god. Okay, then. Um, yeah. Here's my exhort roll. Let's see if it does anything. It's a what? <laughs> I mean, I've been feeling really good now that my goddess is back in a place where she wasn't really welcomed. It's like we're crashing a party. Okay, then. You are messing with a god here. Yeah. Um. So what I'm going to say is that you manage, Amriel manages to aid you and you do get through it. And that critical role is a really good one. So there's now a, a gap in the wind that you can safely pass through uh cool. so that and because it's so a normal spell would have given you that hull the critical you're not going to have to dodge any debris yes okay um so that's on 16 um 15 um rohan you're up i'm going to throw the dagger again except for this time at the girl um so you will you will be throwing into combat because of where cyrus is oh okay so oh. your role will be hard <sighs> sorry sorry buddy i apologize for the upcoming events i'll survive you do know this dagger causes triple damages to sorcerers, do you know? <laughs> 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 so it has a sorcerer. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. That that is um good enough. Um so let's have um a special hit location and damage. Special hit location and damage? Uh marksman okay uh so roll your hit location next eight eight oh. so that is um the abdomen so you can either go up to the chest or down to the legs chest so it actually be in her back just so you know but it's still the same area okay then so you throw the the knife. Um, Cyrus, you see it. It's almost like slow motion that you come down as a bird and you fully form back into you, yourself and then just whoosh, 
you know, making your hair flick, this dagger comes back. And let's see how much damage it does to her chest. Mm. Yeah. Oh, um, four mm. points uh, of um, damage. Okay. Um, yeah. And it sort of like um, comes in. I'm going to say that it actually does land in her rather than scraping past or anything because the chest is quite a big, um, her back is quite a big area. So that actually comes and wedges um, in her back. Um, she lets out um, a scream as this happens and then that is echoed um, by um, Shahelia. And we go back up. Oh, and now, now it's my move. I always forget my move. So the one in front of you, Hasra, I don't know if you, can you see it? Yeah, this was tugged before and she gets pulled up and um, screams as one of the next bar um, disappears, which leaves two bars Okay, two bars, um, one from this one and one from that one. This one, there was a bar there, but Shahelia pushed through it, um, if you um, remember. So there's um, two bars left, and she's going to try to um, um, push her way um, through. Um, but fails with a 92. Um, but you can see um, Cyrus as well. You can see how um, almost annoyed she is. And yeah, that's the end of um, turn two. Um, so we're coming up to three. Um, Cyrus, you're up. Um, seeing the dagger in uh, the girl's back, uh, Cyrus is going to approach and see if he can take the dagger and uh, stab it into her heart. Okay, then. so um, do you have the dagger expertise? Mm, no. Is it one of your... Okay, so roll your um, unarmed combat. All you're going to try to do is just push it um, deep, okay. deeper in into her. Yeah, just, I'm pretty much aiming for the heart, so yeah, that's fine. Unarmed, okay. Yeah, so you sort of like, um, you probably grab her as well. I don't know whether or not yeah. that sounds um, reasonable. So you um, almost like grab her around the neck and thrust this um, dagger deeper into her back. Um we, you don't need a hit location because it's there. So roll, I think the dagger is 1d4. And do you have a, a damage modifier? Um, No, just that, I think. Is this, is this normal, yeah? Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, so just roll a 1d4 then. Two points to her um, chest. Mm -hmm. um so she lets out uh, a almighty um scream but um it seems that because there's this tendril um she seems to have some of um Shahelia's um power and she she's bleeding profusely from the back and you notice her um white robes are you know starting to blot with um red blood um and we come to you hasra on 16. okay hearing um bartleby's voice drift through the winds i'm gonna throw my spirit this girl oh <laughs> yeah here we go um so you want one of these yes please, please work. oh good <laughs> Right, so that um, she's actually in combat at the moment, but you do have a line of sight, i.e. she's not fighting Cyrus. Cyrus has probably got cover behind her, so you can um, hit with it, but you're doing no um, special. 
Oh, I'm using okay. her as a preteen shield. Yeah, so <laughs> so no special. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's a 12. That's a head, no, a, no, chest, a chest, again. There we go. And you'll want some damage for thrown spear. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, gosh, where's it gone? Oh, thrown spear, 1d8. Oh, have all the points. Splinter. You will. I thought oh, somebody first rolled over. Honestly, honestly, you will not believe how many points I've got left in my chest at the moment. I'm hoping it's one. It, it certainly <laughs> is yeah. one. It certainly uh, is can I, one. Can I state something also? Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll just... You. <laughs> You can um, state after um, Baltaby. Oh, Baltaby doesn't have a... I have no actions. To... Yeah, so okay. roll hand. It's up to you. Uh, I am going to move. Okay. For free, right? Just... Yeah, it's still... Uh, it takes an, uh, an action, if that's what you're asking. It takes an action. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd like to get out another knife. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So, um, and that's the end of that uh, round. So now um, this, at the end of it, she goes up. So there's only one bar left. There's only one bar left. Um, and that's it. It says last orders. Are, are you staying there, Rohan? Uh, is, is that where you're going to? I, I guess, yeah. Okay, so the girl on the floor is going to reach out and try to trip you over, but she she fails. Um, so that's not uh, an issue. Um, this is... Ah! So that bar, so that one bar... Um, disappears and Shahelia pushes through um the other bar and all of a sudden the connection um is is made um between um the girl and the and Shahelia as we go to um endurance checks please for Cyrus Hasra and Rohan I think um, Hazra, you're taking um, fatigue. You know what? That sums up my evening. <laughs> yeah. You have had the unbelievable rose. Oh, Cyrus! Oh. Cyrus oh. is in it. You're on fire. And yeah, so um, Hazra and Rohan, you take one level. Um, Cyrus, you are fine. And it's your go, Cyrus. All right, um, you can drive the um, dagger yeah. further if you wish. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Uh, I, I'm gonna drive the dagger further, but I will say like three words: like "I am so sorry," Aww. and just and then st and then okay, drive it further into her heart. So you can drive it further. So we're just seeing whether or not you have um, a crit or not. Right. Um, um, I, I can I can do uh, no that that that's um, yeah I mean you can't stop it so it's just mm -hmm. to see whether or not you get a, a crit um, so yeah do some damage come on guys you make this the good one that is um, the good one um, just to <laughs> hazard just no I, I will I will say it. I'll say it later okay um, that actually. Um, goes to that which you sort of like grab around the neck and push the dagger firmly um into um her body and she screams and dies um by your hand cyrus and as that happens you notice that the filament the tendril suddenly just snaps and you just hear um Shahelia as she tries to reach out for the last time 
as the um, tendril snaps and she just goes, no, like that. And the severed link to her vessel um, is broken and the she's not in jail because those bars have been broken, but that she has nobody to actually hold on to, nobody to actually um, possess. possess. Oh. And she slowly disappears into uh, the darkness. And just you just hear her say, I will revenge myself. And yeah, the, we'll chil the children behind you, Hasra, are crying um, as they've seen this person stabbed in the back. Um, your sh Cyrus over there to free them with the dagger in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just um, Hasra, your spear did lots of dam good, did good damage. Hmm. Um, but not good damage because the vessel can only be harmed by the oh the dagger uh, by the dagger yes so uh, so even if it even if it was a really good shot it was the dagger the, the, uh, um, yes that um, breaks it I, I, I would retrieve my spear anyway um, yeah so as you start to uh, retrieve things the the whole um, plane shifts somewhat and you find yourselves um with the children and the acolyte um in a what appears to be a, a ruin high up in the mountains it seems to be quite um snow um lies all around you but you can see that the the altar, the standing stones are exactly the same. So it's a bit like an interdimensional um, portal, um, etc. So yeah, well done. I hope that hope the combat gave it the right sort of like feel to it. Uh, I, I thought we were going to die. I actually, I actually really did would. think we were going to die. And but you you weren't attacking a, a goddess. No, we were blocking her. Yeah, you were trying to prevent Can her. I blocked another goddess. Yeah. I just, I just wonder what if Bartaby hadn't broken, hadn't got devotion done. Yep, we we would have been on the wise. We've been stubborn acolytes. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah, which would be the logical thing to do. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so so well done. Um, don't get too cocky. Remember, you didn't defeat a god, and and Cyrus will probably talk about it forever. Yeah, because he actually killed the child. <laughs> hey, it's not the first. It's not the first child I've killed. No, do you know what? No. We'll talk about it. <laughs> and the the interesting thing is. Do you know when I put this on um, YouTube, I have to actually up the rating of it. <laughs> oh, yes. I actually uh, have to up the know. rate. Yeah. Um, because you're not allowed to swear normally in the, you have to put a warning if there's excessive mm. swearing, uh, etc. And I think Mr. Captain Kangaroo, at the end of one of the sessions, when you said goodbye, I'm sure you stuck two fingers up at the camera when I look back at it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think I had an itch and I was like, just trying to. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That itch, you know. So, yeah, um, well done. I hope you enjoyed the um, epic adventure and I hope the end encounter was suitably um, balanced for you to think you were up against something quite tough. Um, so, yeah, so you will have a grand total of um, 20 experience rolls. Okay. So there, it's a good time, but it also means that we'll have a good downtime um, before the next um, adventure. I am proposing that next Saturday we start heading off into space and 
play spell jammer um, and get that up and running so that will be the session next saturday and we'll leave is it all right if we just leave this and do experience roles on the next yeah the, the, yeah. the next time yeah. yeah okay thank you for hanging on everybody for an extra 30 minutes i really do appreciate that and we got to finish it so yeah um i will be back tomorrow at nine o'clock with some minecraft tomorrow at th one o'clock with some elder scrolls online um medivac um monday called cthulhu because i forgot last week we're actually off and um, th Thursday will be our D and D at seven fifteen both nights. Yeah, um, brilliant on Medivac the Healing Hoover. Um, excellent. Thank you for all your support. Thank you to the players. It's been fun um, throughout this campaign. So thank you for this series of adventures. Sorry, but thank you for that. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye everyone, and it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. 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 goodbye.